Hello everybody, Mussolini here with our next installment, or should I say our first installment of Hearts of Iron 3, Black Ice mod, playing as the United States. Um, I apologize for this video at least as the record button is also the button that pulls up the diplomacy screen, so there may be some uh, weird little uh, things you see from time to time. Um, so here we are. Um, I've played, uh, or not played, but I've fast-forwarded the clock to uh, the 2nd of January to allow some of these mod events to uh, fire. Um, as you can see, we've got four of them up here on the screen right now. Um, so this first video will basically serve as an introduction to the Black Ice mod and uh, the United States. I'll probably go over everything but technology in this video. Um, and uh, we'll start right here with the Great Depression in the United States. Um, as you can see, it gives me some dissent. Um, my first big decision in regards to research, um, ironically, will be engine type aircraft and tank armor. Um, I know having played as the United States before and checking the technology screen that we already start with uh, 1938 level gasoline engines while our diesel engines are only level or 1935. Um, that's I mean basically pretty similar they just modify different stats so in this case I think the most beneficial will be the Heavy aircraft, gasoline engine, and welded armor. Um, as you can see, the only negative is it takes a little bit longer to build uh, tanks, but 2% is really not all that bad, especially with the modifiles I'll get that will reduce it in the first place. Um, what I'm mostly looking here is the organization, the heart attack, and the intercept efficiency, uh, as opposed to light aircraft, which um, same sort of stats, but uh, uh, not as efficient. Uh, as the United States, I'm a pretty much a, a, a industrial power horse, or at least I will be um, in a few years, and uh, all these negatives will certainly go away. So we'll go heavy air aircraft gasoline engine. Um, do you want revolts? Um, no, I do not. Uh, basically, you can see it reduces my revolt risk. Uh, basically, if I turn this on, I would have various worker strikes and things that would uh, form basically rebel units across the United States and I'd have to go deal with them. Um, I don't think it's very uh, historic, historically accurate. Um, partisans and things like that will certainly still form, especially in uh, occupied Russia and Poland uh, as the Germans, uh, but not particularly something I need to concern myself about. Um, and here's the Model 1920 uh, 14 inch caliber railway gun. Uh, I could build it. You can see it costs a whole bunch of materials. Uh, but in this case I'm going to say no need. Um, so for those of you who, who actually been following me and my videos uh, you'll see this and you'll be like oh the colors are all different, the map's completely different. Um, it may actually run a little bit smoother um, as we see Republic of China uh, different color scheme in certain areas um, and instead of Manchuku being shown as being Japanese like it is in Hearts of Iron 4 it's actually shown its puppet status while Manguku which is this little area here doesn't um, gain its independence until typically Japan takes um, some more of the surrounding territory and then forms it um, as we can see uh, it does give control to certain areas to Japan. Um, as you can also see, as we'll go back to the United States, I guess I went the long way. Um, but even on the political mu uh, view, where we're barely able to see the units, you can kind of see the terrain. you got the desert over here, you got the mountains, the plains. Um, we can zoom in, and generally it's a little clearer. Um, of course, we can always go to the simplified terrain view, which in this case is basically color-coded um, and is a million times easier to read. Um, you'll see in cities, we'll actually have little pictures of the cities and major uh, major towns. Um, so New York and Newark. Uh, let's take a look at Boston up here. So cool little pictures. Um, you may also notice a whole bunch of various things. Um, 
on the problem screen. Uh, I will uh, make it known that this is basically like a new game for me as um, it's been a while since I've played it and since the last time I played it they've added and modified a whole bunch of new things and I'll go over some of those right now. Um, but if we look at the top of the screen real quick we can see resources are managed in a different way in this game. So you've got energy, you've got uh, metal, you've got rare materials, and you've got crude oil. Crude oil is turned into fuel. Um, there are technologies that increase your uh, conversion rate, for instance. Um, however, if you have units in the field and you run out of supplies and oil or fuel, they will stop performing and be unable to move. So supply will be a real issue. Um, manpower is something you always have to keep your eye on. So as you can see, it says I gain some each day. Um, however, once I'm at war, I'll be losing uh, as my units take losses. And the uh, the other major resource is money. Uh, money is what you use to conduct trade. And in this case, you actually have to manually do trades and the person you're trading with has to accept the trade. Um, I personally set uh, the American uh, trade onto automatic. Um, if we look here it says that right now I basically make over a thousand energy a day and that's after shipping stuff out and consuming. I'm making 500 uh, metal a day, almost 300 rare, and almost 400 oil. Um, so I'm not really in a position where I need to worry about trade, so I'm going to turn that on to automatic. That way, up here, I would get, I don't know, four or five messages a day for trade deals with the United States. I'm just going to go back to the political view. It's my preferred method, at least until I'm at war. Um, so looking here at Boston, um, what does this tell us? So it shows us that there are land connections with all these provinces and you may notice compared to Hearts of Iron 4 every individual province has a name if we look at one of these if we look at the regions uh, it breaks it down basically into the United States of America um, while well, obviously the Canadian provinces are too big I don't know what the Canadian states are but you, know, you can see it basically breaks the region mode into the states. So each state, and I don't know where you guys are all from, and I don't know if you see places you're from or know of, but that's how it's done in this game. Uh, shows you um, if there's any naval connection. Um, down here in New Haven, for instance, we see that there's a river crossing. Um, so that you actually click on a place, it gives you some more information. Uh, as we see here as well, uh, Boston has a strategic resource, which is a major airbase, and I'll show more about that uh, later. Uh, allied objectives, you may be wondering what that is. So I can assign uh, my allies objectives. They don't, I mean, it's not perfect, but it kind of suggests to them to move in that direction. Um, you also see the weather, uh, the temperature. Uh, I don't know the translation to Fahrenheit, so it doesn't quite work for me. The wind, so barely any wind. Clear sky, nighttime. Um, this here, I believe, is commandos, covert missions. I don't know what a set evacuation point means, but uh, this is all the commando covert thing is completely uh, new to me as well. Um, so we'll experiment with that, perhaps. Um, then we also see what uh, this province of Boston generates. Um, so it contributes some energy, some metal, some rare, but no f uh, oil. Crude oil, I should say. Um, I'm not sure what the full intel level is, but I'm assuming it's going to be close to 10. No revolt risk. Generates manpower and leadership. Um, now we get into the good stuff. You can tell by these various icons, oops, I just may have to adjust the mouse settings. Um, some of these are standard, some of these are new. Uh, so airfield can go up to level 10, or I guess it's called level 60. 
uh, but should be level 10. Maybe there is because it's a strategic resource, probably. Same with the naval base. Then you've got coastal forts, uh, pillboxes, and fortresses. Um, these will add uh, various defense modifiers to a province. Uh, the higher the level, the more they give you. Anti-aircraft guns, same deal. Radar sights. Um, typically, grayed out ones are either full, you can only get 10 levels, or you don't have the technology for them yet. Um, rocket test site, same deal, you need to have a rocket test site in order to start doing rocket research. Uh, and then industrial capacity, so in order to increase your industrial capacity, you ha can build more factories. Um, heavy industrial capacity is a new one as well. I'm going to guess it's kind of uh, souped up industrial capacity. Um, after this video, I may actually look up their website and try and learn more about these buildings. Obviously, this is going to be the nuclear reactor. Uh, again, technology-based um, shipyard. That's new. So, looks like eventually I'll be able to build shipyards. And same with beach defenses. Uh, looks like those are different than coastal forts. Uh, armaments factory, tank factory, air... That's all new. Uh, these ones up here I do remember from before, though I don't quite remember what their effect is. I think it may increase the um, conversion rate or the uh, gathering of resources. I would guess that yeah, uh, Pennsylvania or Philadelphia in this case already has some. Some steel refineries, coal mines, rare extraction. Yeah, so that's going to all increase the output of materials. Uh, while the oil refinery, I'm going to guess, will uh, convert crude oil into fuel much more efficiently. Uh, then we get into all these other new buildings, urban expansion, that's interesting. Uh, research center. So you may have noticed when we were looking over here at Boston, uh, or not Boston, oh yeah, there is one in Boston, but this is New York. You see a little uh, hospital symbol. Um, see another one that's a police. Uh, center and then these are anti-aircraft guns up here as you can see here as well there's also there's the police badge um, those are all new additions to the game they're not part of the base game uh, rail terminus that's new as well as a desperate fence so like I said there's a lot of things in this game that I just do not know about um, if we look over here the mansion no line we can see the anti-aircraft defenses and the uh, land fortifications. Um, obviously the capital symbol for the capital of the country. Uh, I believe these red circles mean that there's units in them um, because I can't see them. While mine, well, maybe they're... The red symbols are going to be the naval bases showing that they're empty. Uh, I know I have, so blue one, I apologize for the whistle, but whenever you click on the navy in this game, it does the naval whistle, so the uh, fleet has the, I did it again, the fleet has the blue symbol around it, showing it's occupied, well, I believe the airfield, if I can find one, has anything, will have a green circle, yeah, so there are Canadian uh, planes in their capital, um, you would think I would be able to find... That covers the promises real quick. Um, clicking on a naval province doesn't show any information. I thought it would. Um, Alright, so. Uh, diplomacy will be a factor. Uh, this screen shows me... I'm going to turn automate trade on. This shows me all the countries in the world. Um, and the resources and materials they have. Red means they're running deficits. So this is a good indication of who I can trade with. For instance, if Ethiopia or Bosnia uh, wasn't at war, I know that I would be able to... They need money, so I would be able to buy supplies off of them for money, and that would make them happy. Uh, the pyramid here shows the, uh, basically, Democrats or Democratic countries, the uh, Communist countries and the Fascist countries, and it will tell you how much drift there is. Um, so if I'm concerned about my neighbors, you can take a look at my neighbors, but they're all basically on my uh, in my corner of the ballpark. If I want to look at all the majors, I can see that, okay, obviously Russia over there, France in the 
and Germany and Italy down here. All Japan's drifting that way. Uh, all the unaligned factions. So looking here, People's Republic of China, pretty pretty much communist. Um, shows you so you can keep track of where everybody's going. With obviously the following or the below showing you. Um, well, the players in the major alliance. So you still see my flag up here. That's because it's shown you in comparison to everybody. Um, While well, you can see each member of the uh, various alliances are pretty much directly in those corners. Um, when you click on a country, if any of them... So Germany, for instance, is influencing Sweden. Uh, Russia, nobody. Okay, so not everybody's influencing. You may also notice... Uh, this, when I select a country, or Germany for instance, uh, you see the current relations, our threat, their threat, their neutrality, our neutrality, um, and the highest threat, which is nobody at this point, and some info on them, their war girls, relation, you know, yada yada yada. So they're buddy buddy with Italy, and neutral with pretty much everybody else. I may need to let time go forward. It also shows me all my diplomatic options, uh, so if I want to trade with them, here are the sliders for my trade deal. Tell me if they're all accepted or whatever. I can allow them to have a debt with me. I can buy a production license, so if I uh, had good relations with Germany and gave them money, um, I could buy... Um, so these are basically all the units they have that are superior to mine. So I don't think I even have airborne. Um, and... So I could potentially buy airborne engineers from them, um, or German truck transports. But they probably would refuse that at this stage. Um, and you may also notice now, while we're on this screen, this little checkbox in the corner means there are national decisions, and that's where they are here. They're listed right here. The little question mark gives you uh, information on what's required, because you see there are some gray ones. So, if I want to do the stab in the back, Italy has to be at war with France. I get increased industrial capacity and leadership modifiers and lose neutrality. Um, so, in this game, uh, as opposed to world tension, uh, events in the world will either decrease or uh, increase my neutrality. Uh, early on as the United States, pretty much all your decisions that you kind of have to make increase your neutrality. Because if you don't, you just get hit with dissent and riots and reduced industrial stuff and all sorts of bad things. Uh, I may at some point play a game where I kind of refuse all of those and see what happens. Um, I apologize, my uh, friend is messaging me. Um, he's the guy I usually play this game with, multiplayer. Um, so yeah. Uh, there will be things that increase my neutrality, as you can see it's in the red. Um, so before I can join a faction, as you can see in this case, um, the difference between our neutrality and the highest threat against us is too high. The value is 100. This needs to be f lower than 15. Um, so when Germany starts warmongering, uh, then they'll become the highest threat to me. And... It'll have a value, and the closer that my neutrality gets to my threat, the more likely I will be able to join an alliance. Um, so I can align to a faction, which in this case doesn't really matter, unless I'm being influenced by the uh, Axis or the Communists, um, which makes you you're closer to joining them. Um, for instance, now that we're looking at the United Kingdom, we can see that who they're allied with, who they're puppets with, and who they're guaranteeing the independence of. So if we look at the United States, um, we can see that the Philippines is my puppet, which automatically makes them allied with me. Um, but I am guaranteeing the independence of pretty much everyone in South and Central America and even Canada. So if anyone... Uh, I don't think it's... If someone declares war on them and takes them over, then I, get a war, I can go to war with them. Um... So now we'll get into the good stuff. So basically, uh, the reason I let a day go by is so that some of these events can fire and and the economy can balance itself. You know, it takes a minute to adjust. Um, so 
and I'll get into all these other things uh, in a minute here. This could be a long video, but um, so my annual espionage focus. So I can set my spies to basically do any of these things. It shows you what the benefits of doing them. In this case, um, I'm going to go extra spies because this is the beginning of the game. For my economic boost, I'm going to go short term. Um, so until May, so basically, what, five months, um, I get this bonus. Um, as you can see, it's either positive money or positive industrial capacity. I'm in the United States. I'm a big bad boy. I'm already generating 50 money a day, so money isn't going to be an issue. So I'd rather increase my industrial capacity. Um, the military academy. And all these other things will pop up. Uh, messages in a minute. Um, so here's a world event I can take part in. I can actually send help to uh, Ethiopians. In this case, if I send troops, I actually don't control anything. I lose manpower, fuel supplies, and once that war is over, I will get some uh, troops back, usually militia or something like that. But they'll come back and they'll have some experience, um, so I'll be able to convert them into tanks or marines or something like that and have a uh, essentially a more elite unit um, than I would normally would have. Um, then we get the Black Eyes Game Guide. So there is the website for anyone. It's blackeyesmod.com. Pretty simple. I'm about to go down over there myself uh, once I'm done with this video. Uh, the 1936 start. We're just going to go... Uh, you can see there's a multiplayer option and various other ones. Um, if I thought I was a really good player, I could do some of these ones, which are the harder modifiers, which, uh, as you can see, reduce everything even more. Um, it's tempting to go easy, uh, <laughs> but I'm just going to go normal uh, for now. I mean, once again, I am in the United States. It's you know much easier. So the Bank for International Settlements is basically giving stuff to Switzerland. Uh, Unless they lose their neutrality, um, but you basically can get supplies for cash. Um, I think it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which is not how trade works. Um, so I mean, boom, I could do that there. I lost 50 supplies. I've got 26 and a half thousand. Gained 50 bucks. Uh, my national recruiting policy. Again, these all have negative or positive effects. Um, I normally go with the balanced one. That does increase their organization and skill. No, I'm gonna become a powerhouse anyway, industrial. So let's go with. Uh, shouldn't affect my overall. No, let's go with a better. Um, so the other cool thing is that you can actually be in this game, which is the player backstory. Um, I'm going to let you guys look that up yourselves. I'm just going to kind of skip all the reading. Uh, you can see they div give you very stuff. I go respect the leader. This all affects me. Um, this one basically determines what your uh, arm badge symbol is. Um, so you'll see naval, air force, and army. I don't know if there's any other ones. Um, so we're gonna go. My father was a soldier through and through, and. My childhood can be summarized. They sent me off to military school. My hero was a famous soldier. And a young adult. I've never really experimented with any of these. Uh, as you can see, as you scroll down here, there are tons of other events that will happen throughout the game once I meet certain requirements or once the world meets them. Um, so these are just a little and saying, hey, you did all this. 
And if we go back, since it's had a chance to refresh, even though time has still paused, you can see our annual national focus. Uh, we're going to go with science. It increases our research, and since I'm not going to war until 1940 to 1941, no real point focusing on any of these specific ones, so we'll go with science. And uh, I'm going to build new research centers. So for basically the better part of a year, pretty much an entire year, I have a reduction in things by getting new research centers. So we'll increase that. These are all the difficulties for the AI. Um, so basically it's the reverse of what it was for me. So while uh, easy modifier for me uh, gave me positive modifiers, easy France uh, gives them negative ones. It means that they're easier to fight. So we're going to go normal for France. And you uh, notice they have cool little flags. Take a little radio so you're adjusting the dial. We'll go normal UK. We will go hard Germany. Um, make it more of a war. And I'm very tempted to go easy. And you may be wondering, oh, that's going to give the Germans advantage of hard Germany and an easy Soviet. Um, why don't? And I'm going to definitely make Italy hard as well because, I mean, who are we kidding here? We're talking about the Italians. And we're going to go... How much of a modifier do we want to give them? We're just going to go with an easy Japan. So they still get modifiers. As you can see, all their modifiers. We're not going to give them any modifiers. Um, Japan, in this game, apparently tends to build just a million ships. Um, and that's bad news for the United States. Especially early on in the war with Japan, where their technology supersedes ours. Um, my next video, I think I'll, I will go into technology and strategy um, once I wrap this one up. Um, as you can see, it's much more in-depth of a game already, and we haven't even started. And we're going to do normal China. Uh, let's just get rid of these real quick. Go back. So now you can see uh, a lot of these have gone because I've gone through them. Um, these will all stay here until their requirements are met. As you can see, Germany has to be a war of the kingdom. I need to be a member of the Allies. It's at least 1942. Uh, Norwich in England is controlled by a member of the Allies. We're at war and I have 50,000 supplies. That's when I get the UK military bases. And when I mouse over the actual name, it tells me kind of what it is. And then uh, that event will get created. So a new day is dawning. So this is me. Uh, you may be wondering, what does that actually mean? Uh, if we go over here and we select everybody, you may notice it says you. Here I am. We left click there I am. See there, you. Um, so I have some skill. Um, you, I believe, is a HQ unit. Uh, you see, got the army symbol going. No current assigned leader. I'm actually going to turn auto assign off. I'll get into all this other stuff in my next video. Um, this one's already long enough. Um, so I've got, in my specific unit, I've got some military police, an HQ defense attachment, and an armored corps. So I can, uh, I could build some, say, tanks, which is probably what I'll end up doing. And I'll make myself into a combatant. Um, Basically like any other unit, it's just that it will be me on the front line, essentially. Uh, just a cool little uh, thing to the game. So again, I'm at max speed, and you may have noticed that little stuttery pause, partially because of the speed, and because it's the new day, things are being calculated because of all those uh, selections I made. So now we see that by going up to road level network 1, I increase my national unity by a very minor point, and also my organization rate. Rail network, you know, same sort of thing. More, uh, all these 
I'll spread them out um, so you guys can read them for a split second. So, uh, airports are up, seaports are up. Uh, so these are my negative effects right now. So the New Deal policies and the Great Depression are all drastically affecting uh, my country. Uh, as you can see, I'm losing a lot of everything. So my manpower is only at, what, 15% of normal. So that's why I've only got about 2,000 people. My leadership is just taking a hit. Um, everything is down. Research is down. Industrial capacity, over more than half of it is gone just from that effect. But also from these ones. Um, if we look here. So this one, this... Uh, Part of the bar which I uh, have not shown you guys yet is the industrial capacity. It shows you how many wasted factories, so how many factories aren't doing anything. What your base capacity is, which as the United States is freaking huge, 340. That's I think the Italians only get like 60 for instance, and I only have 263 of that 340 available. And you can see the modifiers that both increase and reduce it, with the reductions being greater than the uh, ones. That increase it. Uh, this over here is your pop or your manpower, uh, your diplomacy. So you need to generate diplomacy points, which is based on a slider, in order to send uh, diplomatic trades to people. And when you send someone, like if I was to send someone to the United Kingdom, it would take one or two weeks for that little messenger to go over there, you know, do whatever they're doing their trade deal, and then come back with the answer. So there is like a cool down between. Uh, how often you can send a diplomat to another country. And the little camera next to it would obviously be the spies, the espionage, how many free spies you have and how many you generate a day. Well, we have our officer pool, uh, which is needed for your organization. Um, and for every new unit you create, you need officers. I believe it can hit 120% before maxing out. Um, so it's a little bit low. It's not a, at 100. I'd ideally like to keep it at 100 percent otherwise my units will suffer and when you don't have officers and you go to combat bad things happen well the little flame here next to it is the descent which um, shows you or tells you what it does it basically affects your industrial uh, capacity your people aren't happy and they're throwing bricks through your window they're not going to be working in the factories 10 is quite high and uh, though you probably won't see it since I won't be recording every second of gameplay, uh, this will fluctuate greatly as the United States. There will be events that increase it, and there will be events that decrease it, along with this one next door to it, which is the National Unity. Um, so here we go. Here's some more um, little pop-up events. You see they've always got some nice little uh, images to go along with them. Um, so... Battle Commander, so you have famous people in this game. Uh, we want to... As you can see, these are the ones I have. We want to... Uh, so they come at a price. Um, so right now, I want to get rid of all of them. Um, great news, that's basically the same thing, saying that, hey, they're Battle Commanders. Um, personality effects. Uh... So yeah, I mean, if you read this, you know, if you start failing, then Hitler will demand you recapture it or better manage the economy. Uh, and he can also uh, grant negatives or positives, so I'm going to keep that. See what FDR does. Um, scripted invasions. Now, in this game, uh, like the invasion of Norway by the Germans, you can have that as a script. Um, it's automatically in there unless I disable it right now. Um, and so, you know, it would be the Germans attacking Norway, like they did historically. However, um, the problem with that is that, hey, maybe Denmark is still Denmark, or, or maybe you control the sea zone there, and the German Navy has been decimated, so then how in the hell can they have a naval invasion of Norway if they technically can't get troops there. Um, same with Japan and their invasion. So in this case, 
I don't know if this is the best way to do this. I like I said, I'm about to go visit the website and see see what the general consensus is. Um, but I turn it off. That way, the only invasions that happen are the ones that should happen that are conducted by the AI or myself. Um, don't know what the Willy's MVG does. It doesn't really tell me anything. Just gives me some background on the actual unit. I'm assuming that means I have Willy's Jeeps in some of my units. I, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, and here we go. Here's our first uh, event. The 1936 Neutrality Act. In this case, I will promulgate the act. As you can say, I gain 100 in neutrality. It's a neutrality act. Um, the Democrats and the Republicans... Uh, well, the Progressive Party, the Democratic Party, and the De Democratic Farm Labor Party. As you can see, just by looking at this, the politics in this game much more in-depth than they are in Hearts of Iron 4. Um, you see that certain parties gain things from this, certain parties lose it, both organization and popularity. Um, and my neutrality just keeps me through the roof. However, if I don't promulgate the act, the fascists and the you know dislikables in the country gain popularity and organization. Um, the Democrats and Republicans all lose it. I lose some national unity. And I gain 15%, which is quite high, especially this early in the game. That would put me at 25%, uh, which would be a pain to get rid of. Um, so in this case, we're going to go with the historical decision. We're going to let the day or the game go another day. Um, as you can see now, um, I've lost the effect of medium popularity. Because my people apparently like me even more. So that increases some of my modifiers because uh, I'm a president who's greatly liked by everybody. Um, so I shall come back um, at a later date. Uh, potentially today, maybe tomorrow. I've got a busy week coming up so we'll see how fast and frequent these go. Um, hopefully I will wrap this uh, introduction up today with... Uh, videos on the production technology, uh, intelligence, and everything else. That's sort of an introduction to this game and uh, my playthrough as the United States of America.